the guitar that launched a lot, thousand legends, the Rickenbacker 12 string. I'm Jack Van Breen from Guitar Showcase, talking again for Totally Guitars. Um, and there's always going to be a warm, fuzzy place in my heart for this guitar. Because there's so many songs that would not have worked without it. Classic riffs define an era, define a song, you know, which is, and there's nothing, nothing that sounds like the Rickenbacker 12 string. There's another segment on the site where I talk about an extremely rare guitar, ES-335-12 from Gibson, that they made kind of to try and make some inroads into the Rickenbacker uh, field of battle, as it were. But they just didn't take off like the Rickenbacker because that's what George played. That's what Roger McGuinn played. Um, two guitarists that pretty much defined the sound. So, they're a pain. You'll look at the headstock here and you'll notice that, wait, that's a little tiny headstock. Well, they have the six tuners, like a normal six string, and they had this great idea to keep the headstock small, save some wood, make it fit in the same case, they put some slots in here, difficult to see I suspect on a black guitar in this medium, with tuners going in the classical guitar style into the headstock, both from both sides, for the other six strings. As you can imagine, that makes it rather difficult to replace the strings on this guitar. They typically have a fairly narrow nut width, if you have stubby little fingers like mine, can't tell how many people tell me, oh, I can't play guitar like you, I have little short hands. And I go, really? This is not a big hand, folks. And it's stubby. You end up with fretting the string and muting the other one when you want it to ring. So I picked this particular model to show. This is the 660. It's the only guitar in the current catalog that has a slightly wider nut that I can play. So I really like this particular guitar. Every three, four years they'll do a, a 360V63, which also had a wide nut. If they do one of those when I hit the lotto, I'm going to get one. The other challenge with all 12 strings is, the story goes, that you spend half your time with a 12 string tuning it, and the other half the time playing it out of tune. The other thing that they, they did with this particular version, and this is a vintage piece, trying to recreate a, 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 an era, is the tailpiece is a six string tailpiece. They put two strings per hole. Um, and the bridge, the bridge they did upgrade, I don't know if we can zoom in on here, there actually is 12 individual bridge pieces, so you can adjust the intonation. There's two guys I know, well maybe three, that I would let work on a Rickenbacker. We're very fortunate that uh, Terry Allen, our guitar manager here and one of our techs, actually knows how to make these things work because the intonation is a challenge. Uh, Rickenbacker has a double truss rod, which is nice because with a double truss rod you can, can control some of the warpage where the neck will twist. But he's amazing with these guitars. So if you have a Rickenbacker and you're close by and it needs to be uh, have a little love on it, come see Terry. He'll take good care of you. Uh, really don't like doing commercials on this type of a site because it's more about knowledge and, and sharing. But if you've got a Ricky 12 string and you're having challenges with it, you need to have somebody look at it. I can change the strings in this guitar. I have done it. It only took me two hours. <laughs> and how, how long does it take you, uh, uh, Les Paul? Oh, oh Les Paul, I can do in five minutes. My Schechter 12 string, which has a normal headstock, I can do in about 15 minutes. So there's a, quite a bit of challenge with this. Uh, uh, way worse than restringing a Bigsby, which is also fun. Naturally, I have three Bigsby guitars in my arsenal because I just love the sound. But 
Uh, let's talk a little bit more about this guitar. They have an unusual electronics arrangement. They have uh, these pickups, and, and I think that they're single coil. I'm not sure. They look like a double coil, but uh, they call these the toaster pickups. They're not quite as strong as their current range of pickups, but they really have that sound. Now, the electronics are different than we're used to with the Gibsons because the volume controls are at the bottom. And they put a, a fifth control here. So you got the volume controls at the bottom and a tone at the top, which is a little bit unusual. But they also have a fifth control here, which is a blend. This is mostly the bridge pickup, and you can add in the bass pickup. It's, it's a little bit easier to balance it this way than it is to try and balance it using the individual. So it's kind of cool. Anyway, one other thing that's common on Rickenbackers, this guitar does not have it, but a lot of the 360s you'll see, and some of the 4001 basses, you'll see two jacks. One is normal or standard, and one is Rick O sound. Uh, there was a gentleman who was known for a lot of finger-picking styles by the name of Chet Atkins and with his style. Which is actually credited to Merle Travis. Uh, it's Travis style. And having the bass like this, oftentimes they'd rather have that really accentuating the bottom end so they would split the pickups, bridge pickup to one amp, neck pickup to another, oh. the neck pickup they'd run through a really bassy amplifier, the bridge pickup they'd run to a trebly amplifier with some echo and tremolo and reverb, so your solo would have one tone and your bass pick. So it really gave you a diversity of style. To do that they needed uh, what is known as a, by some as a stereo jack, the uh, audio guys called it a TRS for tip ring sleeve. Rick and Backer called it Rico Sound. Gibson with the ES345 and the ES355 just called it Stereo. Gretsch went way wacky. They not only would split pickups by bridge and, and neck, bridge and neck, I get dyslexic on that all the time, I don't understand. They also would split the pickups in half, <coughs> treble strings and bass strings. So you really could set the guitar up to have just the bass strings from the bass pickup in one amplifier and the treble strings from the treble pickup or the treble and the bass pickup through another amplifier. <clears throat> the uh, best or worst case, depending on your perspective, was the White Falcon, uh, which I don't have one here to show you, but they ended up with uh, four switches up here and I once spent a day trying to figure out exactly what all those switches did and I never got close. I've also not been able to uh, find any documentation anywhere on the web uh, for what those are. So if you're watching this and you go, but, but I know, send me an email, jack at guitarshowcase.com, with what you think all those switches on the White Falcon do. We'll do a Gretsch segment in a little bit, and we can talk more about the switches on, on the Gretsches, but I was just diverting into the stereo guitar thing, because it's a kind of a cool thing. And I first ran into it on a 360 12 string a friend of mine had back in high school. His was what they called the convertible, also a rare instrument. 360 is a semi-hollow instrument. And they put this big piece of sheet metal right between the pickups with a lever that you would lift up, put it down, move it down, and then pull the 12 octaves out of the way. So now, if you're playing rhythm, Instead of getting a 12-string sound, you're getting a 6-string sound. It was kind of cool. Uh, it made it difficult to do anything like this. But uh, it was an honest attempt. They made those, uh, let's see, he got that guitar. I was a freshman. You know, anyway, uh, around 1966. Anyway. Talk, I, before we sign off, no. talk a little bit about the neck finish because it's oh. really different on a rookie. Yeah. Okay, so... Those of you who are astute and understand Leo Fender's concept of protecting the maple fretboards by putting shellac on them, 
are used to having a finished fretboard. Uh, usually with rosewood and ebony, they would just leave the guitar, the fretboard raw, because rosewood and ebony feels pretty good. Um, Brickenbacker shellax over their rosewood. I don't know why. Uh, it does give it a little bit harder sound. So it, it's kind of interesting, um, but they do. It does with a lo low frets and shellac. That happens a lot. Popping off. It's one of the reasons I sold my 58 Strat when I was a wee lad, because I couldn't play a shellac neck. I was not skilled enough. Fortunately, I've, I've improved, and I can now play my shellac Stratocasters just fine, thank you. And there we are, the Rickenbacker 12 string. Buy one today. Buy it from me. I'm Jack at GuitarShowcase.com. Thank you very much.